You're in a good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight, we're talking the holiday survival edition here on Perspectives. Now, if you want to get the most you've ever gotten out of the Christmas and holiday season, you've got to apply these seven steps we're talking about tonight. You know, a lot of times we go into the holiday seasons, we stress out, we overcompensate, we just get out of our own skin. We don't feel like ourselves, and we make we make rookie mistakes, quite honestly. And so tonight, I'm going to give you the seven steps to making this the greatest holiday season you've ever had. Bill, how are you doing tonight? You know, I am doing wonderful, Ashley. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Hanukkah, all the good stuff. Um, and uh, I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say tonight because I think that's maybe a, a major contributor to holiday stress, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Everybody stresses out about things that they really maybe have no control over. Yeah. Or they get stressed out around their family. A lot of people get stressed. It's a big stressor is their family and friends coming in town. And it only happens once a year, so it's not like you deal with it on a daily or weekly basis. Unless you're going to a therapist on a weekly basis (laughs) discussing it. But yeah, you're right. (laughs) You're right. The stress can be a little overwhelming. Eric, how are you doing? Hey, I'm just trying not to get overwhelmed and uh, trying not to make rookie mistakes because we know what rookie mistakes look like on Mondays after NFL games on Sundays. Ooh. That's right. (laughs) It's not pretty. That isn't pretty. That, That is for sure. It's a sad state of affairs. Really. It is. It is. So let's talk about the ho- uh, holiday survival. You know, because I think a lot of times people see the holidays as they hope that they can survive them. And I think that holidays should be more than that. I think it should be way more than just survival. I think it should be fun. I, sh- I think it should be interesting. And I think you should have a good time. So let's start with these seven steps that you can actually follow to have a wonderful holiday season. I think we need to begin with believing in yourself. You know, I think a lot of times we choose to not believe in ourselves. We get a little insecure, and we kind of seem to fall for the BS of who we're supposed to be. And I think that happens a lot of times when we have family around because we feel that we're supposed to be this type of person, especially with our mom or dad. You're supposed to be that type of daughter, that type of son, or, you know, a relative. You're supposed to be a certain type of person instead of just being yourself. (laughs) Yeah, you're supposed to conform. Yeah, you're supposed to conform. And you go back to that old narrative from like 30 years ago when you were in the house and stuff that was going on then still carries over today. But um, yeah, just be yourself, right? Do, do you still have to sit at the kids' table, Eric? Um, You know, I, <laughs> I, I do. It's safer than sitting at the adults' table. Uh, so. Right. So, so you do it by choice. I do it by choice. Gotcha. Man, the kids are a lot better. Gotcha. I sit at the kids' and the grandkids' table and hold the infants. That's what I do. I just think it's interesting. A lot of times we just get insecure. I know people that are in their mid thirties to um, to early forties who actually smoke and hide it from their family. And I think it's funny. I think a lot of people always seen that uh, wow. the Christmas vacation where uh, the wife of Chevy Chase is in there cooking and she like lights up a cigarette yeah. and you hear from the second floor of the mom going, "Are you smoking again?" She's no, mom. You know, and she like you know cracks the the cabbage in half, you know, and gets angry and puts a cigarette out. But I think a lot of people still hide things from their family and why why do they do that i mean who cares about the judgment call and mo- most of the time uh, they're going to know anyway it's that magical they know spell. you it's that magical spell of discipline that parents put on their kids when they're really young i've got people that are in their 60s that still hide from their parents today it's the funniest thing isn't the that hilarious thing. they're like they're six years old again it's funny and you're like man how old are you you're old, way older than me well and I, I think we do it without thinking about it because uh, you know think about it if uh you're born into a certain role yeah. in the family. And even if you, even as you grow older and we all, you know, kind of go our own ways and, and have our own lives, you still don't truly outgrow a lot of those roles. And and I think most people just do it without even thinking about it. It's kind of funny. Uh, my wife shares a story with me and, and uh, they, they call the great grandfather and grandfather Pawpaw. And so what would happen is that everybody would get together. They would do the gifts. They would do all the stuff that families do. 
and everybody would hang tight until Pawpaw left. And Pawpaw left early because Pawpaw was like 90 years old. Right. Okay, and Pawpaw typically left about 8 o'clock. And the minute that Pawpaw walked out the door, everybody went to their trunk to get all the alcohol and stuff that they wanted. <laughs> and then, then the grown folks part is they save again right after Pop Well, and, and probably the reason why, Eric, is is because uh, it was just easier that way. Yeah, it was you know, easier, cause, yeah. Because, you know, fun, Pop yeah. you know, didn't approve of alcohol. Yeah. So, you know, instead of, you know, doing the major confrontation well papa i'm an adult you know with all due respect i'm an adult i can do what i want just let's just do it after he leaves yeah, you know and yeah you know how bad those people's hangovers must have been because they're waiting it out like they're a kid <laughs> they're over here just like pounding shots right? and everything i mean it's a bad scene you know some people call that making up for lost time. okay he's gone, <laughs> he's gone, he's gone yeah. <laughs> but it's all good though it's all good it's all in a good spirit though and yeah. i think everybody there um you know has a good time and and truly everybody's kind of being themselves because being themselves was being respectful to Paul. Ball, so right well you know like a lot of people also talk about the christmas you know the christmas feeling the the christmas time and I, and I think we all have this special feeling over the holiday season but i think that it should really be an all year long thing i think a lot of times we put this into like the last few days of december but i think if we begin to believe in ourselves like our insecurities tend to go away you know and we have more peace and relaxation that becomes us and it seems that we have a better life experience a better experience is with our relatives because we're able to relax and just be ourselves i mean i hate to say it but i wouldn't be hiding my alcohol from papa i mean it comes a time when you got to grow up and say hey this is me and you know what if you accept it that's great if course, you don't you know it is what it is knowing you your papa would say hey pass that over, you know? <laughs> pass it over. Can I get a drink too? Yeah. no I, I agree it's easier i mean it's easier to live 365 consistently Versus trying to cram it all into a couple of days or a couple of weeks at the end of the year. I mean, I, I agree with that. And I think as you get older, um, you, I, me personally, I just don't have the energy. I don't have the energy. And yeah. so I just I, I treat the holidays truthfully the way I treat and try to treat every other day. And that's facing that day, doing the best that I can and letting the folks that I'm around know that I love them. The holidays are just an extra special version of that. And I, I really I, I agree with you on that. And, and I think people just love honesty. I mean, I personally relish in honesty. When people are honest with me, no matter how it sounds, no matter what's really going on in there, <laughs> I, I leave judgment behind, and I really like when people are just honest with me. And I think for the most part, your family members, uh, your friends will appreciate the honesty. It's a fresh it's a fresh take on life, and, 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 and if as long as they can just stop judgment for a second, yeah. I think it's kind of cool. You know, and I think you get to know more about people. You get more facets of them instead of just this, you know, this representative that they show up to Christmas with. That's the perfect Eric that doesn't do anything wrong, yeah. that doesn't drink, that doesn't do this, that doesn't do that. And they're only going to see this one part of Eric when in actuality there might be things that they might be like, well, you know, I'm not so happy about. But at the same time, I'm really glad that I, I know him as a person. And, and, and if they're not really happy about those things, what kind of judgment calls are they really making on that person anyway? I, yeah. I, I love when I became liberal liberated from my idealized, my familial idealized self. I was the oldest. I was the grandkid who went to college. I was the kid who went, you know, and, and, and played football and the kid that was on TV and didn't come from a whole lot and did the whole bootstrap thing. And and once I got to a point as I got older, you know, I, I, I was more comfortable letting folks know that I wasn't that perfect kid all the time. I made a lot of mistakes. I did a lot of things that that I'm not proud of. And and once I stepped away from my family and, and let them see the scars and let them see the warts, I became more comfortable, to be quite honest, um, mm -hmm. because it was hard carrying around that that idealized narrative in a family setting. That should be the one place to Ashley's point to where you just let the hair down and you show the warts and not be condemned for it. Now, I have a question mm -hmm. for you, uh, Ashley. We, we've been talking about the family dynamic. What about uh, like a friendship dynamic? Like, for example, your work environment, you know, because this is the time of year where office parties, oh, yeah. you know, and, and stuff like that, you know, the Secret Santa and, oh, and uh, you know, that, that type of thing. <laughs> and so, so there's a different dynamic when you have a group of friends, right? Uh, whether they're, they're friends at work or you know, friends outside of work. So how, how does the dynamic work there? Well, I think if they're friends, they're friends. I mean, as long yeah. as it's not somebody that's trying to stab you in the back. But I think if they're friends, they're friends. And I mean, you should, you know, you should be honest with them, too, because it makes you more humanistic. I mean, I really do. I mean, unless it's something that you can't allow to get back to the boss because you might lose your job. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think you might want to censor yourself maybe to a little degree if, if that's the case. But otherwise, if they really are your friends in every sense of the word, then I think they would just embrace whatever's going on. 
You know, you don't want to get crazy at the business party, though. I mean, if you're going to have a few drinks, have a few drinks. Control yourself a little bit. You don't want to be on the chandelier. You don't want to be making out with you know folks that you work with. But, uh, <laughs> at least, or at least not I, openly. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not openly. For all you secret let's, lovers let's, out let's there. Let's go have a business meeting in the you know bathroom. Yeah, area, for all you know, secret yeah. lovers out there, at least not openly. Huh? And it works a few times for people to date other people in their organization, but be careful. I mean, it's kind of like dating the neighbor across the hall. Don't fish off the company pier. I... <laughs> And, and I made That's that mistake I, I once upon a, a time. long time ago. I, I made that mistake once upon a time. I, I, I'm assuming y'all are married, so it didn't work out. It, it did not work out. Not at all, right? In fact, it crashed and burned. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh yeah, I know exactly. You, they so. always crash and burn, don't they? Not, not always. Really? Not always. I, I, I've known some very happily marriages and relationships. I know a few, too. I know that, a few, that began, too. No, that began as a work Yeah, yeah I know thing. a few. Wow. They don't work together anymore, though. I know people that all got married, and then they, they separated the work. Thing. Right. But but still, wife. I mean, their their relationship uh, began in the work environment, and you know, it, it worked out. So, love my wife couldn't work with her all day. She knows it. Most people can't. <laughs> and, and by the way, FYI, when I talk about believing in yourself, there's a difference between believing in yourself and being a know it all. Don't be a know it all, okay? Because don't fall into that trap. Believing in yourself is totally different from knowing everything out there. Actually, I already know that, okay? <laughs> yeah, know it all. Seriously. <laughs> so when you're believing in yourself, that's one thing. But when you're just saying that you know everything, that's a totally different story. So when we return, we're going to be talking about the other six steps that you can follow to make this the best holiday season ever. Stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm and there's a swim-up bar. Glass of perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we're discussing surviving the holidays. It's our Perspectives Holiday Survival Edition. And we're going through about seven steps. And these seven steps, if you follow them, will make this Christmas holiday season the best ever. You know, right before the break, we were discussing being yourself and believing in yourself. And it's such a big deal to believe in yourself because when we believe in ourselves, we have that inner feeling. We feel good about ourselves. We're not insecure. We're very secure. And that security access actually gives us peace and it makes us feel relaxed. We're not so stressed out about trying to be somebody we're not we're not so stressed out about trying to impress somebody we are honestly impressed with ourselves and there's a big difference between believing in yourself and being a know-it-all okay nobody likes to know it all but when you believe in yourself it's a different feeling you just feel good about yourself you acknowledge the situations and you don't try to hide things that happen because a lot of times our past no matter how much we like it or how much we don't made us who we are today so the second step on surviving this holiday season is to realize to realize that your family is just but your family. <laughs> it's just but your that, family. That's, <laughs> that's all they are. A butt but, or a family? Uh, well, but, maybe, both. <laughs> maybe both. For some people, they're just butts. Yeah, and other yeah, people, they're yeah. just butt family. <laughs> but, you know, they're just the family because. Yeah. You know, a lot of people sit there and say, oh, my gosh, why can't I get along with these people? Why do I have these issues? Why do I have these problems? Because you're all exactly alike. <laughs> That's what it is. Whoa. Yeah, just because you're all exactly alike. Whoa, 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 Let me see. Most people's families are the exact opposites of them. No, 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 no. There's traits. There are traits. There are traits. There are traits. There are traits. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's what scares me. There's more than one of Ashley. <laughs> that, oh, that's the that's wall? Terrifying. <laughs> that's the wall? That terrifying. She's going to come by here today yeah, later yeah. on. Too. OMG. Oh, oh, yeah. She's going to be right behind you. Uh oh. Oh, there she is. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Uh oh! Let, <laughs> let, let, let me step out of this. One. Well, let me let me speak from personal experience. In when I see my family, good or bad, I see strands DNA pun um, of characteristics. That are either oh, in, I got that. Yeah, <laughs> that, <laughs> d- d- delayed reaction. No, just shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> delayed reaction. But good or bad, there are strands of characteristics that are. I'll put it this way: that I am very familiar with, that sometimes live within me that are suppressed, or live within me that have flowered to the degree of success, and that's sometimes scary. These folks are, and they know your weak spots. They all know your weak they, spots. They, they know you probably better than you know better yourself. You know yourself. Yeah. And, and I got some aunts, and they'll remind me in a minute. Boy, I used to change your diaper. Don't you ever try to get sassy with me. Sassy. Breaks me down every time. Sassafras. Yeah. And I think I'm this big time <laughs> guy, and they break me down to that little bitty toddler with a diaper every time. And you're just like, 
Yes, ma'am. I'm like, yes, ma'am. I and remember I'm, when you pee peed in the bed. We had to change those. I had to change those sheets. <laughs> You're just like, great, thanks, I, my, thanks. My mom always tells me, look, uh, uh, you mess with me, I'll just take you out, and and I'll, I'll make another one look just like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay, try that now, mom. Try now. <laughs> put your put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> but actually, you, that's I, I I don't dare call her bluff. I don't dare because I think she'll I, don't, I think she'll. Call it. You remember, you gave, you gave me authorization uh, on, on a previous show to just take you out and shoot you. Remember that? Well, yeah. Well, if, if I get to the point where I'm just like, you know, terminally ill and there's no hope of recovery, <laughs> but not now, Ashley. I mean, I, 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 we, think, I think you're a little too eager to get rid of you, here. man. Don't do it to you. Is this a good Ashley? Is this the other Ashley? I was going to say, I think the other Ashley's come out. <laughs> she just here. stepped in. Yeah. To yeah. Talk about being honest. I, I think she, she's honestly, you know, Brutally. plotting my death. Yeah, but here. you told me to do that. I was like, you got to be kidding me, man. I, I had no one to desire to do that, but which, now you put me in charge of that, so I'll have to figure it out. Which, by the way, you know, for those of our listeners who aren't sure what Ashley and I are, and Eric are talking about, then, uh, Ashley, they can go listen to our previous podcast on... iTunes, Perspectives with Ashley Burgess, or go to Spreaker. Spreaker! And put in Ashley, and you'll find Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. And you can listen to previous shows, and you can find out uh, why I gave Ashley permission to uh, take me out. Every, every time I heard the... Every- <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing me on this. You, I'm, I'm cracking up over here. I'm just dying on this deal. Tis the season. That's right. Tis the season. Hey, it's, 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 it's a happy holiday, you know, and uh, what are we thinking about? Killing Bill. <laughs> uh, and yes, that was a pun, too. Yes, that was a pun, too. I know oh what you're God, thinking. Oh, my God. The DNA strands, the killing Bill. I yeah. love this. No, so so I think a lot of people, though, forget the fact that family is just family by relation, though, right? That's the key. Like, a lot of times, we don't pick our family like we pick our friends, By right? blood relation. You don't pick yeah. your family like you pick your friends, right? You, you get them. So they, you they just have, keep giving to you. You have to find a way to get along with them. Yeah, but, but, yeah. But, but I go back. It's blood relation, though. And their shared and, and, their, and their shared characteristics, good or bad, it's well, blood I, relations. You know, I think there's shared characteristics in the human race. I don't know, if which it's is all even shared. more depressing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot, Ashley. You're just making this worse. Thank you, Ashley. You just expanded my my my, my uh, realm of depression. But, and but now, Eric, the, the, let me ask you a, a question, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not even a the... degree of separation. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, it's all the same. Um, you know, nature versus nurture here. Okay, you yeah. know, I mean, yes, families do have shared traits, but how much of it is the learned dynamic you know uh as as far as everybody's personality and stuff like that yeah you you know and how much of it is is just part of your you know genetic makeup okay i i personally uh, lean more towards the nurture part Mm -hmm. you know you you grew up in this family unit and based on the personalities there you just learn and based on your own natural personality you learn how to fit in the dynamic well, what about this? So, okay, so I grew up in my family unit. I was the only child, and I had a mom and a dad. That's it, and a dog named Snuggles. Okay, so the rest of my family Snuggles, so Snuggles, so Snuggles, so Snuggy. So and the rest of my family lived out of state. Okay, and so I only saw them on holidays, and I and that's the only time I see them anyway is mm-hmm. on holidays. So there's a big difference between the way we were all raised. And again, kind of the impact of that. And so I think a lot of people listening tonight might be in that same position where they might have been raised with just their immediate family. Some people actually listening tonight, half their family is not even in the same country. So they have to actually plan a whole, you know, they have to take off out there and they go for a month at a time to see family. But I think that a lot of times when we're not raised all together, you have a totally different aspect of people. It's almost, and I'm not saying strangers, I'm not using that word, yeah. because I think everybody is connected and you can find commonality in any human period, in a story. We can all find commonality with any person walking down the street right now. However, you feel like you have to find that when you're around family. Like, we got to figure out how we connect here. You know, what do we have in common, you know? Insanity. Insanity. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We all want to kill Bill. That works out. Yeah, let's Bill. have some chicken and talk about that, you no, know? Yeah, I, I, you Seriously. Know, Bill, to your yeah, point, right. I don't know where the Straight line Bill. begins or ends. Um, and you're right, nurture, nature, it all um, kind of impacts it. I go back to a personal experience, and, and I didn't know my real father until I was uh, 15 years old. There was a lot of circumstances I'm not going to get into right now. But, you know, it was kind of funny because I was raised in a completely different environment, completely different dynamics. Um, And when I met him and met the other side of the family, 
it was like, wow, these people are so familiar to me. We talk the same way. The interests are the same. Uh, we walk the same way. And so anyway, a completely different situation. But at the end of the day, they're our family, and we all have the same challenges, regardless of socioeconomic, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of geography. They're still our family. I go back to something we always talk about in church, and I joke about it. When you look at a lot of the uh, stories in the Old Testament, it was always about a tribe or a group that didn't get along with another group or a tribe, and they walked to the other end of the earth to start a new tribe because they couldn't get along with their family. Right? You know? Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> and, and there's been times where I've considered that. Yeah. You know, believe, believe me. You know, I, 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 just I walk think like we all have. Gump, run. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. run, Forrest, run. Yeah, just put on my shoes and just start running and, and so know, you, until I run out of room. Yeah. And so you start another tribe, and guess what? Those same dynamics. Yeah. You can't run away. You can't, you run, can't away. run from yeah. your problems, okay? That's right. And if your family seem to be your problems, you can't run from them. Can't run from them. You know, you might you can't can't live with them, can't live with them. Which goes back. Can't, can't live with them, can't shoot them. <laughs> Which goes back to one of the reasons I love this show, because we deal with it. Yes. <laughs> and platforms like this, all of those. We deal with it the perspectives way. We deal with it the perspectives way. What a godsend. And we do, and that's what it means to be authentic and real. That's what we're doing here on Perspectives, yep. because you know we all know that if you met your family members and you didn't know them before, and you met them randomly in an elevator, you probably wouldn't be hanging out and being friends together. Okay, we get it, we get it. You're not going to go hand pick those people out to spend every waking moment with, right? However, you got them, you got them in the lottery, in the family lottery, and then you just got to <laughs> deal with it. You know, I mean, you know, you can't go out there and shoot them. You got to sit there and find some sort of commonality with them. And and and, and when we when we come back and the next break we're going to be talking about how to really make that a reality because we can sit there and say hey you got to realize family's family but how do you really deal with people that sometimes maybe you don't like what they're doing you don't accept what they got going hmm. on and we're going to talk more about that here when we return interesting and i just got a pair of queens playing a little bit of a little bit of happy poker here on the side yeah we're, we're doing texas hold'em here on perspectives <laughs> it's a good one i got a pair of fours up for that anyway so when we return we're going to talk about how to deal with that family and really how to deal with the assumptions we make about others perspectives with your host me ashley burgess will be back in we'll be back in two shakes This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight's show is the holiday survival edition of Perspectives. You know, we're actually giving you those seven steps that you can follow to have the best Christmas holiday season ever, ever, seriously, ever. And right before the break, we were talking about uh, our second step, and that was to realize that your family is just but your family. That is it, what it is. They're not the people that you hand-selected as your friends. These are your family. And so if you realize that and you realize that they are there because of blood relation or whatever type of relation, that you don't have to try to fit in, but try to realize what that's about. And so our third step is to stop the assumptions. This is a judgment-free zone. A lot of times dealing with our relatives, we make judgment calls. And you're almost asking the impossible there, Ashley. I mean, yeah. Don't make judgments about your family. I mean, you grew up around these people. Yeah, but that's just the wrong way of dealing with it. You can't, you can't be happy if you're judging people all the time. Actually, I know people who, uh, if they're not judging people, then, uh, you know, they're miserable. Yeah, but they're already miserable. <laughs> well, no, I, 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 I kid about that because you're actually right. Uh, uh, it's uh, You know, in previous shows, we've called them uh, energy suckers. I mean, these are the people that, you, you know, they just take up all the air in the room. And, you know, they're miserable people, and they want to spread the misery. Well, you know, even the most non-miserable people, so there's a lot of people out there, and I agree with you, that make judgments. And a lot of times we make judgment, especially on family members, by their past. And I'm sure everybody listening tonight has had the nephew, the niece, somebody in that... The crazy uncle. But there's somebody in that perimeter that has yeah. done something not good. Okay, possibly gone to jail or done something or been a wild one. And you see that person again and you automatically make a judgment call. But people can make change in their life. No, no, I agree. They, they, they judge them by their past and they also judge them by their intra-family lineage. You know, that's... You said that fast three times. <laughs> no, family, no, family, no, 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 family lineage. Jennifer French family lineage. I can't even do it. said what? <laughs> yeah. And it's funny. It's funny because, like, so, for example, if you've got three kids and, and, and one of the kids is the wild one, 
and he has a family. And what does he produce? He produces replicas of himself. And so a couple of generations down the road and you get into an argument, you're just like so-and-so and and just like so-and-so before him. And my mother does that. You know what I'm talking about. And and you listeners know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And and just like your father, Bill. Yeah. 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 And and uh, actually I'm being dead dead serious now. Actually, uh, when I was uh, 15 or 16 years old, uh, I, I had a, come to Jesus moment with my mom and uh, and I said mom uh, you know you're my mother and I respect you and I love you but I am done listening to you badmouth my father yeah and wow. don't don't ever do that again yeah and she hasn't yeah for, well, for, well for the most part and, 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 and what happens with that and and one of the negative things about that is that you now not you uh, Bill but in general you carry the burden for a generational fight you know, um, and that happens in my family. It's like three generations of people have been arguing. And just, so it's like if you don't oh, choose stuff a that side. Ha- happened years, yeah, years ago. ago. Yeah, years yeah. ago. And if you don't pick a side, then you're automatically judged, to Ashley's point, um, to be this certain kind of way. Um, and I was caught up in that. You know, just because my so-and-so didn't like you, I'm not supposed to like you either. And yeah. it's the funniest thing. And I got to a point in my 20s when I was more independent, done with college. And I said, this is crazy. This is crazy. And I put those things aside and got to know those people as individual people within my family. You know what? Wound up we had a lot in common and loved each other because they were sick of it, too. And, you know, Ashley, uh, of course, uh, we are live tonight uh, and uh, we're live on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, I think it it would be good for our listeners to get on and share their stories. Please, uh, please. You know, uh, judgment, judgmental uh, people in their own family, you know, situations where either our listeners have judged others or perhaps they've been judged. judged, Uh, You know, share your stories with us. And this is one big family. and, And don't feel bad because we all deal with the same issues. Trust me, we do. It's true. I mean, I remember years and years ago, um, before I was married, I remember my dad and I had had a few problems for several years. We didn't speak. And, um, you know, we went through an issue. I mean, he basically, you know, found another woman and divorced my mom. And and um, there was a lot of stuff going on, you know, and he was hanging out with her before the divorce was really ever gone through. And there, and there was a lot of water under the bridge. Anyway, there were a few years that we didn't speak. And now we're very close. We're very close. And, and we've, we've dealt with all the problems in the past. But I remember my uncle... Um, it probably made a lot of uh, judgment calls on the situation because people hear things yeah. not about the reality of it. They just hear things from a second or third or fourth party. Yep. And so we're sitting there um, at, 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 a, at a Christmas, uh, pre-Christmas dinner on like the 24th. And he just makes some sort of popped off comment. And, and I looked Uh-oh. right at him and I just was like, and I wanted to just go for the jugular. Wow. You know, because it was, I was hurt. I'd already gone through enough stress already. And there's just something that just said, hey, just calm it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I said, you know, hey, I would really prefer to talk with you about this situation, not at the table with 12 other people, but I'd love to talk with you about it. And we went in the other room and we talked for about two and a half hours. Awesome. Awesome. And my uncle and I are extremely close. Yeah. We are best friends. But it, it, it took that. It took me to actually sit there and say, don't be reactive. OK, don't yeah. be reactive. Don't assume the worst. And go tell him what's going on and explain to him what the reality of the situation is. And then we were able to talk about it and everything changed. I mean, yeah. people looked at us and we're like, what are y'all doing? We're like, we're going to go shopping. We'll be back. We're going to go. T-. And they're yep. like, together? Yep. Yep. Icebreaker. And and it, and it changes your reality. And it takes one person. <laughs> it takes one person to stand up and do that. Ashley, you were that person in that situation in your family. I've been that person in my family. And that's the empowering part of it is that. If you don't like it, you have the power to change it, and you change it within yourself um, first. One of the things that I do around all of the holidays, everyone who walks into our house, I give them, regardless of what the history is, regardless of who doesn't like who or who's not talking to who or whatever, I give them a big old hug, and I say, I love you. Thank you for coming. Enjoy yourself. And so I try to create an environment um, of love. Does everyone buy into it? Not all the time, but you know what? The ones who do, they, they leave to some degree transformed, and hopefully that's a way to mend some fences with those individuals. Now, actually, here's uh, the other side of that coin. Uh, oh, not the is this the ugly side of the coin? Yeah, it ah, is. there's always an ugly side. Well, yeah, my mom and, and her sister, uh, you know, don't get along, and they're both in their sixties now. And here's here's the yeah. where it started. It started in, in their childhood. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, my mom and her siblings were latchkey kids, and they grew up in the 50s, okay? So my, my grandfather was a maintenance man, 
uh, for the VA hospital. And uh, my grandmother, well, first she worked for the sheriff's department, then, then she became a teacher. Okay. okay. So they both worked during the day. And so a- after school, uh, my mom and her brother and sister, you know, were pretty much, you know, left to themselves. And, uh, you know, my mom was the oldest. And this is back, you know, leave it to Beaver, Ozzy and Harriet, yeah. you know, type days. My mom was expected to have food, dinner on the table. Mm-hmm. When, uh, <coughs> excuse me, when uh, my uh, grandmother and grandfather came home. As the oldest daughter. As the oldest daughter, yeah. right? And uh, so she was a kind of, she, she was really the surrogate mother. Now, so but in my, my aunt uh, is the youngest. So there's the oldest daughter, youngest daughter mm-hmm. dynamic. And where my mom was expected to be kind of the surrogate mother, and my aunt resented it. Yep. And, uh, and also your aunt was able to be the kid, and your mom was never able to be the kid because she was always having to be the caretaker. Right. So she resents the fact that she always had to take care of her. Right. And then the flip flop is that she always is she your aunt resisted the fact that she was in charge. Right. Yep. And you know so and, and then okay so long story short yada yada grew, grew up you know but to this day whenever we have family get-togethers, you know my grandmother still has to play umpire because they will start sniping at each other. Yeah. Over some. Dumb, like they're six years old. You know, again. I mean, yeah. it's just something that's just so inconsequential, and uh, uh, you know, they'll start sniping each other, so, and, and Granny will have to say, "Girls, but, now they're both sixty-year-old women, girls." You know, this it's, is, it's, it's sad though because people you know, do have those issues that go on and on. What would you do? I mean, I mean, if you you wish you could just sit down with them and say, I, "Hey, let's talk it over." I, I had Bill, man. If you and I aren't soul brothers, we aren't soul <laughs> brothers, man. Because I got the exact same dynamic, and yeah. it is just baffling to me. And and I had a breakdown or breakthrough with that aunt that my mom and there's several in my family. So there's there's crisscrossing wars going on all the time. And I had a, I had a conversation with my aunt because it just wore me out, especially as a dad. And it was emotional. I said, look, I love all of y'all. I love you, auntie. I love mom. I love all of that. And you guys have no idea how much hurt you guys cause when you don't get along. And, and it, it because it just sucks up the air out it of the room. It sucks the I mean, air out of the room. Everybody yeah. else in the room just feels so uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. But the good thing about what we've done as the, as the offspring of that is that we've made a pact to cross, reach across the aisle, which sounds ridiculous, sounds like Congress, um, to each well, other. It sounds like war. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, exactly. it's like two, two warring factions. Let's a- make peace. Exactly, to reach across the aisle and, 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 and stop that cycle. And I think that's the power that we all have. We have that power to stop that cycle and recreate something new and different. Hey, Ashley, you just drew three of a kind. You still playing cards? <laughs> she, she, she's still playing poker over here. I'm still playing. How'd you see me? Let's play spades. I don't know how to play poker. Let's play spades. 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 Gin Rami. Let's do gin Rami if we're going to go spades. <laughs> no, I, but I, I agree with you on that. And I think it's it's easier. Sadly enough, we get so in tune to the reaction. The reaction of reacting. of Just being is still within us. We're going to react. And it's like you just got to stop the reaction and be proactive. And, and, and try to put one step for, you know ahead of the other. And it's not about who's right or wrong, but nope. it's also like, in the end, what's going to happen? In the end, what are you going to say? <laughs> I, I dealt with this situation or I didn't, and I'm upset and I have a lot of regret. And we've done shows before with people jumping in the caskets, trying to get with the people that have already passed on. Oh, my Uncle Leroy, my Uncle Leroy, don't go, don't go. Exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't get to tell you how I feel about you. Oh, my gosh, I love you. Oh, my God. And, and people don't do it. And so guess what? There's a lot of regret here. So let's let's try to end that regret and be proactive instead of reactive. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking more about how to not judge other people by their past mistakes as well as how to actually accept and move on. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. I can lift you up. I can show you what you want to see and take you where you want to be. Get in here and give us your perspective. We're listening. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight, we're doing the holiday survival edition of Perspectives. If you want to get the most you've ever gotten out of the Christmas and holiday season, apply these seven simple steps that we're discussing about tonight. And right before the break, we were talking about stopping the assumptions 
ending judgment, having a judgment-free zone. You know, because I think a lot of times we have a tendency of judging people from their past, about the past mistakes that they've made. A lot of times we do that because we do it by, what, historical reference. Oh, well, this is the way it's always been with that person, so they've got to be that way. As well as we have a tendency of being reactive instead of proactive. And, and, you know, right before the break, we were talking about how important it is to really just be able to find some sort of middle ground. And, and I think my, you know, my illustration about my uncle and I discussing about something that I was going to be about very, very reactive about and deciding to actually step up to the plate and discuss with him changed our relationship forever. And, and I think, I think, you know, the next point that we have, our fourth one is just to actually allow people and accept them. And that means. Not <coughs> placing their past mistakes on them, but also just allowing people to be who they are, accepting who they are. And acceptance is a little bit different from judgment-free because acceptance is more like, I accept you, I care about you, let's move on. It, you know, and accepting them warts and all, realizing that we all have our faults. Yeah. And uh, I want uh, uh, you know my friends and family to accept me for who I am. And so I, it's only fair for me to do the same for them, even even if they drive me crazy once in a while. But I'm sure I drive them crazy once in a while. If you got to be driven, be driven crazy every yeah. once in a while. You know, that's kind of interesting. I, I, you know, Ashley, you know, my sister, Erica, and we're a few years apart. Um, and for me, it, it really began with listening and not that we have issues. I mean, we're really close and I'm thankful for that. But one of the things I learned about family is 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 is. Is, is 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 perspective pun intended but you can grow up in the exact same house have the exact same parents have the exact same dna pool and have a completely different perspective than the person sitting right next to you and she and i would eric and i would talk about certain situations and 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 she would see it not negatively but she would see it completely different than i did because i was a little bit older and i saw it through the the lens of a guy she was younger and she saw it through the lens of a girl so she picked up different nuances than i did and we would have these conversations and she would point out things that i was completely oblivious to 20 years later and so listening to the other family members perspective and realizing that their perspective is as emotionally powerful to them as yours is to you and well, not disrespect that or discount that. I agree with you. And it's also about having different experiences. Yeah. She experienced something different. And, and you know, and, and given the fact, even if parents are the same, people have different experiences. And the way that they interpret those experiences are their perspective. Yeah. No, I agree. And it's a beautiful thing because it gave me a better understanding of who I was, but I had to listen. And I love your story about your uncle, um, um, Ashlyn, when you were sharing that. I kind of put myself there and, and what that must have felt like, that breakthrough. And it must have felt like a huge weight off of your heart. And once you've lifted that that baggage and that weight off your heart, there's no turning back. And, 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 and you try to mend those fences as much as possible. And that's kind of where I am. I don't want to be stressed during the holidays. It's a it's a it's a time of the season for peace, reflection and lightheartedness. And I'm not going to go back to the days of carrying around the baggage of family. Well, now, uh, Eric, you may have hit upon a point there. Uh-oh, you, uh-oh. You, you don't want to be stressed during the holidays. So in your uh, in, in kind of generally speaking, in yes. our quest to not be stressed during the holidays, maybe that causes stress. And then therefore we start sniping at each other. Mm-hmm. Over just the littlest things, but they've come magnified. Yeah, because it's like, okay, I don't want to call stress. Don't want to call stress. Don't want to call stress. Now I'm stressed. Right. And that's and that's human nature you know? to a degree. But I think as you mature, it, it, it happened with my wife the other day. I was stressed out about something. The money's tight, and the month is long, and all of that kind of stuff. And I was a little bit perturbed by it. But immediately thereafter, I said, you know what? I'm sorry. It's the holidays. I'm sorry. There's a lot going on. We mend it and we moved on. Well, and I think a lot of times, like what you're saying, Bill, as well, is you get don't be stressed. Like, I don't want to cause stress. But I think a lot of times in our heads when we're saying that, we're walking on eggshells at the same time. Yeah. And so a lot of times we have a tendency. Doesn't that cause stress? Don't you think? Well, yeah. And that's by not being honest. You know, and the reason why we don't be honest with people and we become more reactive is why? Because our ego. Ego. Stands in the way of us. Actually, it holds us back because it likes when we have problems. Didn't you do a show a while back on ego? I did. I did. And, And if somebody listening tonight wanted to listen to that show, how would they do it? They can just go and put perspectives of Ashley Burgess into any Google, and they'll find it on iTunes. Bill, that that, that, that's sm- that was a smooth I'm plug. I'm telling you, brother. you know, I, I just, you know, get him right in there, you, you know, you don't even, and then all of a sudden you're wondering, wow, how did he do that? You know, you slow jam that plug in there, man. That was nice. 
That's just how I roll, brother. Ashley, how do people, if they want to do it's that, how I roll? How can they do that if they want to do that? The quiet, Ashley? the quiet storm. <laughs> <laughs> the quiet storm. Bill, you could be in my family anytime, man. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Bill will be there for Christmas. <laughs> This is my white friend, Bill. <laughs> this is my, my brother from another mother. <laughs> so let's talk about ego, though. So we're talking about ego because ego, ego, I can't say what ego is, but it starts with a B. And ego gets in our way when it comes to certain things because ego is one of those things that stands out there and goes, I want to have a fight. I don't want to make up with this person. I want to have problems and I want to storm out of here and I want to walk out the door. I want to make a big exit. And we're going to cause chaos again. Because I'm ego. Because I'm ego. Even though, and, and what you're hearing instead of that is, I'm not going to deal with this. They're pushing me across, you know, they're pushing me to the edge right now. They just don't even understand me. They don't care about me. Ah. You know, that's what you're thinking in your head. That's what your head, that's what your ego is telling you. Oh, they just don't care about us. Ah, I get they don't it. want to know who we are. I get it now. And, and so to a degree, family is the anti-ego. Mm -hmm. And ego won't let you interact with your family because... Family is the anti-ego. Right. They, they, they will shrink your head faster. Than... Exactly. I don't care if you're the president of the United States of America. I remember I used to change your poo-poo <laughs> diaper when you was a little baby. So you need to get yourself in order and get yourself straight. Exactly. And also, and, like you and, said earlier, a lot of times family, we have similarities like we do with humans. And we don't uh, necessarily always like the, the similarities that we have. Because it's a mirror. Because it's a mirror. It's a mirror. And uh, sometimes you don't like what you see in the mirror. So you see, I, mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, here, here we go back to the ego. Uh, I think it's natural sometimes you want that funhouse mirror reflection. You want to see what you want to see. And not really what's there. You know, you don't want to see the funhouse the, mirror, though. It kind of like well, because, the I mean, it, stomach and then a well, I mean, his head. I mean, it. it uh, what, I mean, I don't know what mirror you're looking at. <laughs> that's my regular mirror. I was gonna say, you know, that's 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 what I see normally. Yeah, I'm a little offended, Ash. I know. I'm, I'm Ashley, trying to lose on. weight. You know, I'm, I, I used to be. No, I'm just you kidding. like that bulbous head. <laughs> the bulbous head. Yes. It, you know, we, we like the head's too big for the body. That's that. That's our word of the day. Hey, that's how I was born, Ashley. Stop, that's hurting me. Stop it. You're bulbous. Like, you're like my family. Bulbous. Bulbous. Ego no like what you're saying. Ego no like you. Ego no like you. No, ego not good. <laughs> no, but think about it. It doesn't. It doesn't allow us to get close to people like that. Yeah. They're, you know, and, and it's true. And and I think also maybe sometimes you know that's a good point you also <laughs> said too. Sometimes you got to tell family too if they keep bringing you down to size. You might want to say, "What is this? Why is that?" It's like, because there's a, there's a reason for that too. It's because they're looking in the mirror. Yeah, because yeah. you know you know how it is. I, I mean, I'm not going to name names or point fingers or name names, but I have a few relatives that um. I just don't talk about my career. Yeah. I don't talk about what I yeah. do because anytime it's ever brought up, and it's not ever brought up by me, it's oh, never. Look, look at Ashley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh she thinks she's all that. Oh, oh she's big look at pants Burgess. Yeah. Oh, you know, she got big pants Burgess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she thinks she's all that. Well, no, I don't talk about it because I'm not, I don't want that. Because if it, when, when somebody brings it up, they always just take me down to size. You know what I mean? Like, I could be in the same magazine right next to Obama's uh, article about uh, welfare and, and family values. And then there's my article right there, and they'll be like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know about that magazine. It will. I don't know. I don't know about that. Okay, well, hey, anyway, pass the food, you know. I mean, <laughs> good luck with all that, Ashley, okay? Huh? I remember when you were just, you know, okay, okay. So I don't talk about that kind of stuff. But I've realized now that if you keep hiding what you do, what does that mean? I mean, eventually you got to come clean and start getting down to the, to the nitty gritty of why is it that they want you to feel that way? They're, 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 they're going to feel whatever they're going to feel. And by the way, Ashley, um... I, you know, big pants and all of that stuff. I, I just got to say, you look wonderfully, just wonderfully wonderful in your skinny pants. No, thank you. Oh, <laughs> here Yay. we go. Well, what a way to wrap up an hour. What you a know? way to wrap was, up an hour. So, hey, I'm not a family. I can say that. I like that. That was nice. <laughs> Eric, let me get you something for Christmas. For uh huh. Christmas. That's a, here we go. The yeah, brother, he's going to get something better than you, Bill. Yeah, I, I'm going to get a lump of coal, right? <laughs> yeah. The brother. Over I, actually, here. no. I'll, I'll get a three fifty seven slug in my skull. You're working on it. I'm over here blushing, but you can't tell because I'm so brown. <laughs> Mocha. 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 <laughs> I'm blushing on the inside. <laughs> I love that. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking more about those seven steps that you can follow to get the best, have the best Christmas ever. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. We'll be back in two shakes. <laughs> ¶¶
You're in a good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. We're going to draw some uh, perspective. We're going to draw uh, a road and some phone poles and a building going into the distance with some mountains and shadows and all that kind of stuff. We're going to do it really fast. Um, You can't do perspective without a horizon that you're looking into the distance at. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And you've entered the zone, the holiday zone, and we're talking about the holiday survival edition here on Perspectives. I want you to get the most out of this holiday season, the most out of your Christmas. And if you follow and apply these seven steps that we've been discussing, you're going to have the best season holiday ever, ever. So right before the break, we were discussing about dealing with people's past mistakes, not to judge, not to place judgment of any kind. And I think a lot of times, instead of acceptance, this is what, what we need to be doing, we judge people by their past mistakes, we make judgment calls, we feel that people can never change, and we put people in certain spots, we pigeonhole them into who they are, when in actuality, we just need to let them grow, let them be who they are, let them flourish like a flower. <laughs> and and I, I, I've already figured out what, uh, what I'm going to get Eric uh, for Christmas in order so, for him to flourish. I'm going to get him a portable space heater, so he can just carry it around with him. That's cool. But- he, he just put on a pair of gloves. For, for those of our listeners, he just put on a pair of leather gloves. You know why? Because you're cold. He's Michael Jackson. No, because I'm equatorial. Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I, I'm, I'm sitting over here burning up. Yeah, it is hot in the studio today. And, uh, you're he's always like burning up. Yeah, I'm always burning you're up. You're on fire. You're Be- fuego. Because I am in fuego, baby. I'm fuego, baby. That's right. Because I'm equatorial. Oh, diablo. Well, me, I guess I'm polar. Because, you, know, <laughs> I, I, I you know, so anyway, I, I'm going to see if there's like a carry around space here you can just put around your neck. I seem to be in the happy middle. I, have, I seem to be like, I'm fine. I'm content. I'm not cold. I'm not hot. Even well, Steven. It is Perspectives with Ashley Burgess, so as long Look, as the star of the show, you know, the, yeah, it, yeah. It, with you and your entourage. We were just talking in the break, you know, how Ashley travels, you know, uh, she tries to travel incognito. You no, know, I don't. Sunglasses. With, the, with the baseball cap you and know, the Greta Garbo cap. glasses. And, I don't do any of that because my eye contact is extreme, and I get what I want when I show my eyes. Ooh. Ooh. Betty Davis Ooh. eyes. Let, let me look away. Yeah. <laughs> let me look try away. It, because try it's too, it's try too it. bright. Before I turn into a <laughs> pillar of salt. <laughs> it's too bright. It's what too happened bright. to Eric? Oh, he turned into a pillar of salt, man. <laughs> I thought it was the holidays. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You got that. We got you got a bullet with Bill. You know, we got to take care of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I get a bullet and Eric gets a portable space heater. Then we got to figure out what to get you, Ashley. Oh, God bless. Give me nothing. Just, just your love is what matters to me. Aww. I'm going to give her my family. That's what I'm going to give her. <laughs> now, well, what did she I do got to... instant family. Instant what? family. Wait just minute. add water. What did she do to you that was so bad? She didn't do anything. I just think she needs more color in her life. What? Uh, I'll get three kids and a wife. But your your family, your family though? I mean, there, there's better ways I to do that. I want three kids and a wife. I'm going to get all of that right now. It's going to be awesome. Three kids and a wife. <laughs> You see, you see Ashley walking around, she's doing her best. Angela Jolie walking around with a bunch of little brown kids. And a <laughs> wife. And a wife. And a wife. <laughs> and a wife. <laughs> now, are you going to keep this wife, uh, you know, barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen? Is that what it is? I don't think I can impregnate her, but, uh, yeah, I think I'll let, leave that up to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just took that a little far, but that's okay. Hey, it's, it's the holidays. It's, 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 it's the holidays. It's the season to be merry. <laughs> and, and, and the eggnog we had dur- during the break, uh, I think it was spiked. So, you know, you'll just have to forgive us out there. Ellen and DeGeneres would not be like best friends and hanging out and then like Portia and like and my and your wife which is now mine could hang out all the time and <laughs> we'd just be running around and yeah see and then I'll adopt like a couple of other children from like Ecuador or something. That'd be nice or Persia. Or Persia. I heard those Persian kids are really nice. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and they have perfect families that never fight during the holidays. For, for thousands of years. For thousands of years. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it's it's getting thick in here. It's getting thick. But yes, <laughs> we're, we're, for those of you who don't understand, uh, we're, we're making fun of our intern here. Yeah, it's a long story, but we'll get to that in another show. However, we'll be making fun a lot. I guess y'all will be. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I was gonna I'm, say, I'm y'all, neutral, neutral. Y- y'all make fun of me uh, so much, and we might as well just start making fun of everybody. Okay, well we will then. I don't want to leave you 
Well, I see. I always want to keep you an individual. You know, like you have like a certain spot. You're on a hierarchy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep some momentum going on. See, that. This is what That's holidays are supposed to be. That, guys, all the listeners out there driving and at home and having listening parties. This is what the holidays is supposed to be about. You have fun. You make fun. You love each other, and you keep it moving, and you wait till the next time. And you find ways to make each other flourish. Exactly. And you get rid of the. Yeah, see, and you get rid of the bickering and the fighting. Another nice little segment. Nice. That was nice, man. That was see, nice. that was awesome. That was nice. Like a flower. Back to the flower again. Yes. No, so let's go into the concept of number five. Drum Don't... roll, please. Yeah. <laughs> that was a cute one. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. I do many things. <laughs> okay, okay, stop. 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 <laughs> Okay, we're going to switch re- subject matters and go rewind. right there now. Rewind. We're live here on rewind. XYZ News, and we're talking with Eric here on the, on the streets of uh, Anytown, USA. Let's this talk about that last comment. Um, family show. Yeah, yeah, this well, is I talk about flourishing here. Don't flourish. <laughs> I'm not even. I was going to keep going on that, but I'm not. Okay, so number five, don't overanalyze. Don't overanalyze. Or re- no, no, wait a minute. I, I, I want to think about that a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is why we have to stream this show on, on video live, because if, if y'all uh, listening in, on the radio just saw Ashley's face, it's, it's a good thing she didn't have that 357 in hand right that long, because uh, otherwise it'd be just, you know. I would not do that on the air. That would be like immediate prison time. God, I know. I, 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 this show's got to go on forever. We can't do that. I'll just, <laughs> I'll, I'll just scare you with the tactic of possibly doing it. No, but you don't want to overanalyze, and you don't want to read too much into what? The actions of others. Think about it. And that, uh, that Overanalyze is so what I do. just said. <laughs> that, that, that is so easy to do. You know, because actually, I think, don't you think, Erica, that goes uh, hand in hand with point number four. You know, oh, you know, so I saw the way she just looked at me. I, I know what, what she's really thinking. And, uh, you know, it, and, and obviously that, that explains why she did such and such. You yeah, know? You're, you're already locked and loaded before she may be looking at you to say, you know what? You have beautiful eyeshadow on today, but you're already locked and loaded with stuff that you. What, what do you mean by that? Yeah. You, you, you yeah try, 20 trying, years ago. What do you mean today? You know, you, you're trying to say that I don't wear eyeshadow. You, you know, it, it's, it's like it's like a Star Trek, you know, thing shields up, it, you know, yeah. what I'm saying? And, and you're already going in ready for battle. Yeah. And uh, so locked it, and loaded. Yeah. And I think we all do that a lot of times, especially with family, especially with family, the ones that we've grown up with and the ones we might not have because we make judgment. We, we think that they're making some sort of assumption. We even look at maybe their actions or the way they look at us and we make that judgment call. Yeah, I do feel small when my aunties look at me, though. <laughs> I feel like that little kid with the afro and the ashy lips, you know? And, 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 and the newly changed diapers. <laughs> yeah, the newly changed diapers, man. I, I, at one point in my life, I used to do, I used to model, um, I also used to do TV commercials and all of that. And, and I'll never forget, I, I, I sent my aunt one of my layouts once, and she said, oh, look at you. You just grew up to just be a handsome young man, but I still remember your little ashy feet when you were little. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. And, and your ego went from here, it went from here to here. To there. <laughs> you know, you know, and I, to a degree, that's probably what I needed at the time. So, But anyway. Wow. <laughs> Bring me down to size. You Bring know, so we, we like it when people are hard on us with their love. But yeah, no, but think about think about the concept, though, of how we feel about what people look at us, how they, how they look, how they act. And then the problem is, is that we see a look or an action come from someone else. And because we're already thinking something else is happening, guess what? We react to them in a certain different way. And what happens? All of a sudden, both people are locked at each other thinking, oh, okay, well, they have a problem with me. Well, I have a problem with them. When in actual it could just be an emotional situation. It could just be just the way they are. They, they might have so much in their mind that they're not thinking about how they're looking. And also, people forget that a lot of people out there have emotional imbalances. Yeah. Like, people forget the fact that some people are walking around with a lot of issues. No okay? kidding. A lot of They, they, they and, forget. And, and you know what? That, people have issues, really? Yeah, and that's a really good point, Ashley, because yeah, sometimes we overlook that or put compartmentalize that when it's family oh that's just so and so or that's just you know you know tom or that's just Susie. you know susie's got some really really mental clinical things going on and 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 probably need some help so <laughs> yeah and the medicine might not be working and yeah and a lot of times that's what happens is we make judgment calls based on the way let's say Susie looks that day at you 
And you go, oh, she thinks she's all that. Oh, and, she and, thinks he's all that, you know. And and Susie's not even thinking that. Poor Susie's just barely holding on. Barely yeah. holding on. Here's the other yeah. side of that coin, Ashley. It's, it's, you know, Susie obviously needs a you know, mental help because Lord knows there's nothing wrong with me. So, <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. So, uh, you know, I don't know why she's looking at me like that, you know, because uh, I haven't done anything wrong. Well, when poor Susie's yeah, over it. there just wondering where her where her butt is and her head begins, you know what I mean? Sometimes we have those situations. And it's funny. Where it, you just don't even think about those kind of things. And it's like you have to sit there and be what? You have to be it within yourself. You have to believe in yourself, have some sort of understanding of yourself to even understand what's really going on. Because if you're over there uh, judging yourself, judging everybody else, making all these random judgments and assumptions, you're going to walk into the situation and just say, oh, there's just a bunch of sharks here for Christmas today. One of the you most... One of the take most, a bite if you need. <laughs> <laughs> one of the most liberating things I did early in my life, in my in college and 20s, was I would go and visit friends go for their holidays a lot in college i would go and i had diverse groups of friends i had you know anglo friends i had latino friends i had uh, you know arab friends and and all of that and latino friends and and i would go to their families and and every time i would go it would be funny because i didn't have it uh, uh, i didn't have a dog in the fight i didn't have a dog in the race and so i could sit there objectively and look at all the dynamics and and that made me love my family even more oftentimes <laughs> as and, crazy and as looking they were. back on it to all all those people should have charged you admission they probably yeah because it was yeah. a show it was yeah. like a broadway show man but but yeah, so for our listeners out there if you haven't you know go visit some of your friends families for the holidays and oftentimes more than not it'll make you appreciate your own family and that drama even more than you would being around your family all the time. So That's hilarious. I love that. <laughs> i got to do that myself. Yeah. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking more about these seven steps that you can do to make this the best holiday season yet. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm and there's a swim-up bar. Glass of perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And we're talking about holiday survival. Holiday survival. This is our holiday survival edition here on Perspectives. And if you want the best holiday season yet, you want to have the most fun, you want to experience what it's all about, you got to follow these seven steps we've been talking about. And, you know, in the last hour, we talked about believing in yourself, you know, not falling into the pitfalls of buying into someone you're not, not trying to fit in just because you think your family wants you to be a certain way. You know, realizing that your family is only your family, that they are family. However, you didn't choose them. Okay, and a lot of times we want to fit in or we want to try to understand where we fit in with our family. And it's kind of it's kind of an honest deal. But at the same time, you just got to accept the fact that you didn't pick them. They are your family and grow and roll with the situation. You know, you want to stop those assumptions. You want to have a judgment free zone. You want to also allow people to grow up from their past mistakes and to accept people and to realize that when we overanalyze situations, which is just what we were talking about just from the last segment, the, the fifth the fifth and really good golden step is to stop overanalyzing situations and to not sit there and look through the actions of others to try to find some other meaning. You know, oh, so-and-so is after this or they're doing that. Because a lot of times you have to understand people don't really realize what they're doing. But also there's people out there that have a lot of emotional imbalances, okay? And so it's not even about you. Yeah. And that's the funniest thing is everybody's like, it's all about me. Well, you know what? It's not it's about not. you, okay? And a lot of times, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not about you at all. You know, you just happen to be in the peripheral vision, but they're just trying to keep their life going. They're just trying to stand up straight, walk in a straight yep. line, and put it together, right? Yep. And, and, and it's sad because a lot of times we don't even think about that. You don't realize that... Whoever in your family is really struggling with some imbalances, you know? Yeah, and, and life life is hard, uh, period. Life is hard. And just because someone smiles all the time because Kiki smiled, she's a, she was a smiling baby and she was a smiling kid. But you know what? Kiki has problems, too. And, and, and just because they're smiling and, you know, you know, life is hard. And, and I think once you accept the fact that it's hard for everybody, you know, hopefully you can take some of your guards down and, and again, appreciate what we're talking about these holidays. Um, just a little bit more when you realize nobody's got it easier than anybody else. It's just their own personal circumstances. Speaking of uh, Kiki, shout out to our boy Keenan mm -hmm. tonight. 
<laughs> what up, Kiki? What up, Kiki? Kiki you, you, you missed that uh, oh, did episode, I? yes. I just, yes, it was home. awesome, though. Kiki, Kiki the man. So it must be this osmosis thing. I don't even need to be in your physical That's presence. Right. Yeah, and I'm picking just, up on you guys, out. man. And that some. Um, we needed so. a Kiki. So, so we, we needed are, a Kiki. We needed a coffin. I mean, we needed a Kiki. Yes. And we got a Kiki now. Perfect. Now we got to find a cough drop for me. A cough drop for yes. Bill. Bill's Boy. toughing it out. This I, is this is show the, sec- the show must go on. This is the second show in the span of what a few months that you've just really toughed it out, man. Hey, you know I'm, I'd be I'm at all home. about it. I'd be at home in a robe, fetal position, and my six socks. I'm all about Even it. Six Remember socks. my six socks? I'd have my six socks on. And, and, mm-hmm. and your- do you wash the six socks between being sick? Or I, I do. I do. I have to watch the six, wash the six socks because mm-hmm. I don't want one sick to impact another six. <laughs> so it's not like a good luck pair of socks like you wear in sports. You gotta you gotta wash these and yeah. or a jock strap. You just no I'm sorry. Sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. Just, you gotta wash that or not really speaking of over analyzing <laughs> I had a couple of teammates that didn't miss my lucky jock strap. We're gonna win the championship. I'm like, brother, you're gonna win the championship by yourself <laughs> if you don't wash that dog on jock strap. Sorry, I digress. Sorry listeners. I had a moment. Too many blows to the head. Ah, that made me laugh that's, so hard. Yeah, that, that's that's uh, speaking of uh, you know. Uh, football not being does that. Him. Football yeah, does that. Bang on the head. That's you know? hilarious. That actually made me laugh pretty hard. Huh? <laughs> okay, nobody wearing their lucky jock strap today. Okay, so no, and that's another. That's that should be that should be step eight. Okay, don't wear uh, unwashed jock straps or <laughs> underwear to your Christmas holiday <laughs> events. <laughs> Wash your clothes. Smell okay. It's, okay. It's, it's, especially Do the smell test before you go over and, there and especially clothes that come in direct contact with uh, your most intimate region <laughs> do the smell test if you got to just wash just watch just try the wash deal do the wash and dry the washer and dryer they love you they love you too the washer and dryer is a good thing they good they good people man yes. they good people they love you you know put some detergent look at eric there. over there he's like crying he's put laughing some detergent hard. on there too don't just wash it with water put some detergent yeah in. use actual soap i like it when i go hey did you wash your hands and you look at somebody and they're over there washing their hands with just water you go Man, that just defeats the whole purpose. I've I mean, lost all of my professional composure. <laughs> I'm in tears over here. It's hilarious. Eric is actually tearing up over here. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no jock strap in sight. No one washable well, and menstruable. I, I was going to say no jock strap in sight. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we we may make him uh, drop trowel here in the studio oh here in a minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> And our intern, Vita's looking over going, okay, I'm going to leave the room now. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my. We, we, t- we take it at all time. That's okay, so, so number six, um, on the things that it, you can it would, do. It would be a new moon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I just did that to you. <laughs> it'd, be a, it'd be a black moon rising. That's right. It's, it's, a, it's a new moon. <laughs> mocha, mocha, mocha moon rising. See, I'm, Cafe I, mocha. I, I'm the full moon. See, I'm the full moon and you're the new moon, okay? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, who's the eclipse? Okay. Let's <laughs> oh, we've lost oh, it. Oh. We've lost okay, it. Okay, Ash is going to pull it back together here. Okay. Oh. See, laughter is the best medicine over the holiday season as it well. Is. But number six, the number six step that you can take to make this the most fulfilling holiday season, period, is do me some me. Do me some me. Do me some me. Enjoy being you. You know, like, go into it. Feel how it is to be you. Enjoy the now. Enjoy just being, for God's sakes. I'm not asking a lot here, okay? I mean, like, breathe in and out and realize it's pretty cool being you, okay? Just being alive. Like, always go, well, you know, just being alive. Well, where's the just at? I don't know why they add the just. Like, when I add the family butt in there, family butt family, it's like just alive, just I'm just alive. It's like okay, you know, you know, it is what it is. And you know, our listeners uh, all around the world, because we have listeners all around the world, Ashley, on iHeart and everywhere else. But check out uh, iTunes for Perspectives with Ashley Burgess, or go to the new Spreaker. There you go. Which is uh, Spreaker with an R, which is off of a lot of um, Facebook and that type of social media. Just put in Ashley A S H L E Y, and it'll pull up Perspectives, and click on that and follow us there, and listen right there from your phone and how do you be me so me i mean because that's the thing is like you know when people say i'm gonna do me i'm gonna do me you got to start doing you where you get past this drama you get past the drama that you're gonna try to get pulled into especially with the family drama and you enjoy just being you 
And what I'm trying to get at tonight is this, is that when you're actually realizing that it's really cool to be alive and you're breathing and, and your life is pretty good, even though a lot of times we sit there and we say, you know, life sucks and, you know, I'm barely moving in, I'm barely walking around here, you know, I'm just trying to survive the holidays. It's like, chill out, because a lot of that is drama and stress that we place on ourselves for no reason. I mean, really, there's not a lot of reasons. I mean, there are some out there, but you can let that go. And a lot of times when we get around family, though, we allow those stressors to get even more volatile. You, you know, I think we need to add one, and, and Bill made a good point. I, I think, you know, when you encounter that family member that causes you stress or causes you anything other than happiness and joy, just start laughing. <laughs> like we just did. <laughs> you know, just start laughing. Just, uh, just you know start what? I'm laughing. just going to leave it aside. I'm just going to have a, I'm going to have a good time in spite of you. Yeah, in spite of you. you I know? know I was having a rough day today and and uh, we all have it. Just a lot going on, a tight schedule. I got to catch a plane and all of this and and man, I feel 10 times better, man, just listening to Ashley talk about jock straps. Man, <laughs> yeah. thought it. See, and, and weren't it's you total glad Total eclipse, man. Yeah, total eclipse. Yeah, weren't yeah. you glad you got out of your meaning to come to this? I'm glad I got out of my meaning to come to this because I needed this. Yes. I needed this. So, yeah. And everybody listen I hope you needed this too hope because so. that's what it's all about is yeah. laughter is the best medicine. Sometimes yeah. we take ourselves too seriously. Yeah. And when you're doing me some me, you stop taking yourself so seriously and you allow yourself to be funny. I mean, that's the key is that a lot of us are really funny people. You know, we, we are humorous. We can be almost comedic. Allow yourself to be that way. Allow yourself to just be you instead of trying to fit in all the time, being uptight or whatever it is that you got to fit in being. Uptight is uncomfortable. It is, especially when you're wearing your lucky jock strap. <laughs> yeah, it's very uncomfortable. I mean, it's, it's very it's uncomfortable. Two sizes too small. Yeah, I'm tight. You got to let stuff breathe. <laughs> Which, you know, in, in, in my case, they, they don't make sizes, of, you know, for me. So, you know, that I have to deal with that all the look time. At the, look at the on bill. Arr. Arr. <laughs> Oh my lord! Listeners, listeners, they're gonna be like chest pumping. Uh, actually, actually, when you go to bed tonight, let that be the last image that you that you have oh, in your geez. mind when you're going to bed tonight. I'm hitting my, I'm she, hitting my head she, on the she, microphone. She, right she, now. She, she's like, uh, you know, get you plucking her eyes out here. Get out of we my head. We see Ashley next week. <laughs> Ashley, why do you look like that? I hadn't slept in days. <laughs> why you hadn't slept? She, That's I'm, me with my head on the microphone. <laughs> doink, doink, doink. <laughs> yeah, here. There you go. You know, bang, bang your head. There you go. Oh, the images. The images. Listeners, you cannot get this anywhere else on your radio dial. No, you cannot. Cherish it or, or your, your, your spreaking or whatever the other thing that you're doing. You can't you're get it. it. You're iTuning it and all of that. So thank God for perspectives. Well, continue this show. we got a lot more to talk about, about how you can survive this holiday season. So stay tuned because I will be giving you the last tip and how to really follow these steps to having the best Christmas holiday season ever. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. What is Perspectives. I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, we're doing the Holiday Survival Edition here on Perspectives tonight. And we're giving you the seven steps that you can do, that you can follow, to have the most awesome Christmas holiday season yet. You know, because I think a lot of times we put too much on our plate. You know, we go back for seconds way too much with helpings of stress and anger and resentment and assumptions and all kinds of insults and things that happen in the water under the bridge. I like that. I'll have a, I'll have another help into the water under the bridge, please. Yeah, I'll take that to you. And a little bit of assumption and a little bit of, uh, you know, J- what judgmental. the heck she thinks she's doing over there looking at me like that across the table, you know? A healthy side of judgment, you Health, know? A big time healthy side of judgment. Fully loaded. With stuffing. Yes. And, and mashed potatoes. And gravy. Mm, gravy. And chives. Mm. Chives. <laughs> oh, I love chives in my mashed what about potatoes capers? and gravy. Wow. What about capers? Italian capers. Mm. There you go. I can wow. go for that. She puts uh, capers in her eggplant. I I'm, I'm, I'm personally don't like uh, you know capers in the eggplant. Excuse me, folks. I'm <laughs> hungry now. I'm going to go get something to eat. God bless us get all. Get on with your bad self, making me hungry. That's right. Hungry. Hungry. 
I'm hungry. I'm already hungry, and I just ate. Okay, so let's talk <laughs> about this. So the, the sixth tip that we had was being do me some me. Do me some me. And you know what that means is be you. Do you. Enjoy being who you are. And try to, like, eliminate and divide off from stress and anger because guess what? I have clients come in all the time, and I've spoken about this, where I have clients come in all the time and say, I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm pissed off. I'm this. Well, you know what the thing is, is that if you I, – I guess you're no longer Karen anymore, so you're, <laughs> you're pissed off. I'm going to refer to you in your first and last name now, pissed off, okay? So you're not Karen – now we got it. And so a lot of times we define ourselves by whatever emotional situation we're going through at that exact time. Well, because we we don't say I'm feeling this or oh, yeah. or, or whatever as I am. And uh, it, whenever you say I am, then you, you own it. You become it. You become it. And, uh, and, and that's probably not the healthiest way to approach it. And a lot of times we take on drama and stress that's not ours either. When we're not being us and we're not being honest with ourselves, we're not being me. Guess what? You allow other people's stressors to come into your life and to cause you havoc, i.e. you walk into a family situation, correct? Somebody makes a comment. You take it wrong. You assume one way. Guess what? If you were being you, you probably wouldn't accept it wrong because you would kind of see through it, right? What, what do you mean my mashed potatoes don't sound like, don't taste like granny's mashed potatoes? So you mean they're bad? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, they just don't taste like granny's mashed potatoes. You got something potatoes. else to say about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. If you don't, if you don't think they're like grandma's, why don't you just get up from the table and just go on right now? Jed, start the car. We're no leaving. corn for you. But, but before you get the burnt roll upside your head, and <laughs> <laughs> you'll sit and eat your, you'll sit and eat your biscuit. Slow your roll. <laughs> Slow your roll. You'll sit over there and eat your biscuit. Go outside. The the, the burnt biscuit. <laughs> burnt biscuit. You'll be happy to get that too. That's right. Yeah, I'm all thankful get. to get it. That's all you get. So our seventh step that you can take to make this holiday season the best ever is to realize that you're more than you. You can be love. You're love. You can demonstrate love, be the non-judgmental love that's needed yeah. Yeah. in the situation. And that can that can dub all the way through the year, and that can also move into your entire yeah. lifestyle and change your lifestyle. And it's a powerful posture, um, Ashley. You you mentioned it with your uncle. I've done it. I'm, I'm sure Bill has with a lot of his dynamics and others. But that's a powerful, that's a liberating posture within the dynamic of a family structure, love. And like I mentioned earlier, when folks come to the house for the holidays, I don't care what happened or who's not talking to who. I'm going to give you a big hug, and I'm going to tell you I love you. And I'm going to look you in the eye and I'm going to give you a, another big hug. And, and that's powerful. That sets the tone, at least to some degree, for the next few hours, at least being uh, something that is uh, flourishing to a very high degree. L-O-V-E. Love. Well, and, you know, I, I whenever we talk about, uh, the, you know, the topic of love, and obviously we're, we're talking uh, in the context of familial love, you know, rather than romantic love. Uh, but, uh, you know, actually, uh, I always uh, think of that passage in the Bible uh, where Paul is defining what love is. And also, also more importantly, what it isn't. You know, mm -hmm. love doesn't keep it record wrongs. Yep. You know, yep. it, it, uh, yep. uh, you know it, of course, the whole passage uh, off the top of my head escapes me. But I think the point there is that, uh, you, you know, when you genuinely love someone, uh, again, in the context of familial love, then it's, it's not a balance sheet. You know, one act of kindness has to be equally repaid with another. Or if they do something to you, well, you know, that's a debit under their account. You, you, you know what I mean? It's, you know, if, if you get so caught up in keeping records. Keeping score. Yeah, keeping score. Then, uh, you know, all of a sudden you kind of go back to step number five, right? You know, sit there and overanalyze it. And then, you know, so it's like, uh, you know, well, I, I know, you know, he mean, it meant that. But, when, when was the last time the scorekeeper was happy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a good way to put it. Score, you know? Which, Bill, and, and I love your points, man. You have a wonderful way of seeing the world, which brings me to one of my favorite Sting songs, which was one of his off his Blue Turtles album, which was his first solo album. And one of the songs' title was "If You Love Somebody, If You Love Someone, Let Them Set Them Free." I mean, basically, what you're saying don't don't bring the baggage and don't bring the past judgments and don't bring all the other stuff Ashley was mentioning into that dynamic. If you love them, love them for who they are at that moment. W words um, and all. Uh, words and all. Uh, you know, words and all. Even even if at that moment that you know you would rather strangle them as as to look at them. 
you know, but, but uh, uh, you know, just... Sounds like a good family Christmas. I, I'm telling you. you, know, you, you, need come, you. you need to come to my family's uh, gatherings for, for holidays one of these I'm going to go one time. But, you, you know... <laughs> Who she can to? It's, she's wonderfully nice. Who let the lo- lo- lovely young lady into the house? She's just a sweet young lady. Who she can to? <laughs> nobody yeah. in here. No, nobody here. <laughs> yeah. Hence why everybody likes her. Hence right. why everybody likes her. So. It's true. I did go to a, I did go to a family reunion one time with a friend of mine, and um, yeah, it, there was about a hundred and forty people there. It was yeah. a huge reunion, and yes, I was the only white person there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody loved me. I mean, I loved everybody. Loved me, baby. Who you kin to? Oh, who God, your, geez, is great. Who, who you your know? people, baby? Who your people? Yeah, who your people? Who your family? <laughs> exactly. Where you you know where you stay? You know. <laughs> And I was like, this is great. My friend's like, yeah, you're just seeing the best of the best. <laughs> I, you know, they're, I get crap put, on a daily basis. They're putting on an act for you. You know, actually, that's why I love you so much, because I did the same thing. I went to a Jewish family deal, and they're like, who who, who are your people? What, what what branch of the tribe are you from? You know? I was like, I go way back. Yeah, I go way back, and everybody love me here. <laughs> I go way Don't back. have a yarmulke, but everybody you're, love you're me here. You're part of the lost tribe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I go way back. The lost tribe. <laughs> the lost more tribe. <laughs> Shout out to my boy Milton out there. What's up? <laughs> Milton. What's up, Milton? Yeah, so let's talk about this. So the whole idea of demonstrating love, acceptance. What is love? It's non-judgmental. It accepts. And I, and I think a lot of times we don't feel our we don't feel 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 ourselves. You don't feel your internal selves when you are not accepting people. When you are full of judgment and constantly judging everybody around you, even if it's not being said, and it's just all up in the up in the noggin. You're putting this like divider between you and other people. And it's interesting how a lot of times we start like like I think I've talked about this before is that gossiping is one of the biggest things that takes you out of the moment. Like right when you start gossiping about somebody and I'm talking about not something that actually happened with you. I'm talking about a hearsay and then you're gossiping about a situation. Like you're no longer in the present tense anymore. You're like a spectator in your own life onto the sidelines, not even focused on your own journey anymore because you're too busy talking about what so-and-so and so-and-so did and who's the father of the baby and are they really pregnant or they buy pregnancy pee or do you know or do you know what happened? So you got all these issues going on and it's the same thing as when you don't love and instead you're non-accepting and you're judgmental is that you're no longer... In the, you're not in the you're not in life anymore. You're playing some sort of game that either other people that are judging are playing as well, but you're missing the whole reason we're here. It's like you're missing the whole event. You know, it's like it's like showing up to the party and never opening the door. You know, you're out there in the front looking at the front door. You don't ever ring the doorbell, and you just stand there, <laughs> and you hear everybody look, inside having a great time, and you stand there stand for the look, rest look, of your life. Look, looking through the peephole, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I see figures in like, there. Like the, yeah. Scrooge, like the Scrooge, like the scene in the Scrooge, right, where he where they, they showed him his life with him being dead or something? Yeah, kind of like that. You're just a voyeur. Yeah, waiting at the door of life, right? Waiting at the door. Man, that was profound. <laughs> Yes, that was great, Ashley. Good you're, job, Ashley. You're good. good you're good. I'm yeah. being me some me tonight. Don't, don't, don't break your arm patting yourself on the back. <laughs> I'll let you do it. Okay. I'm being me some me tonight, so let's be some me some me. You know? But uh, let's, when we return, we're going to be talking more about these seven steps and how to really put them into your life you know, and use them throughout the year, but really to have an awesomely successful Christmas and holiday season. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in, we'll be back this time in two shakes. Show you what you want to see and take you where you want to be. Get in here and give us your perspective. We're listening. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight's Perspectives have been the Holiday Survival Edition. The Holiday Survival Edition of Perspectives. I feel like I should say Entertainment TV. No, the Holiday Survival Edition of Perspectives. And we're talking about the seven steps that you can do and you can follow to have the best Christmas holiday season ever. And in the last hour and a half, the last two hours, basically, (laughs) the last lots of time that we've been on here, we've been talking about believing in yourself realizing that your family is just your family, stopping the assumptions, the judgment-free zone. I like that one. That's that's actually pretty cool. Judgment-free zone. I like that. I'm going to make a poster of that when I go home for Christmas. Uh, I'll actually get one. I'll get you a neon sign. Thank you. Is there there a toll? You have to have a toll tag to get on that? 
do that zone. I, I think I'm going to require it. Yeah. Members <laughs> only. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Toll tag. You want all the people in the world to be a member of this zone. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, toll tag. Toll tag. You don't want to overanalyze. You know, you don't want to overanalyze the actions of others and assume things because usually what? Assumptions make an ass out of you and me as always. You know, you want to do me some me. Do me some me, which means you want to be yourself. You want to understand who you are. You want to get in the groove. You want to feel the feelings of being alive and just how miraculous this whole thing is instead of all the stress and anger and drama that a lot of times we fall for, especially around family. There'll be that one family member that it's like you both love the pain body. There's like this pain body within both of you that you go, oh, I, I'm attuned to that. Let's let's be let's negative hate. You know, let's negative talk about stuff right now. And in actuality, there's really no need for that. And then lastly, but not least, was the whole concept of being love and understanding that, you know, if you're not being love and you're judging people and you're making assumptions on, on account on a second to second basis, it's like you're standing literally outside the door of happiness and not even realizing that you can ring the doorbell period you're just standing there and i've been there before where you stand there and you're just kind of like this sucks and yeah it does suck because it's like standing outside of the greatest party ever and never getting in so let's talk a little bit more in depth about things that you can do to really activate these seven steps and create the happiest coolest christmas holiday season you ever had i think the first thing is to be honest is to be historically honest to be honest with people because when you're honest with people there's nothing else you can say Honesty is a good thing. Honesty is the best policy. It is because you're not having to lie. You're not having to BS. Now, without getting too deep into it, actually, because uh, I know we're, we're already we're, deep. I, well, I know we are, but I mean, we're, we're, we're in the last segment of the show. You mean maybe. not to dig another hole? Not to mean? dig another hole here, but uh, uh, there, it, it's also good to be tactful, though, isn't it? Well, we're not talking about you look good or you don't look good. You know, Grandma, you, you look fat in that dress. We're not talking about that. We're talking about... Hey, this is where I am in my life. Yeah, this is what yeah. I'm doing in my life. I, you know, and and for everybody out there smoking or drinking, deal with it. You know, be you. Step up to the plate and boo you. You are. Don't sit yeah. there and hide it behind the shed or out there by the garage. You know, spraying on some perfume or some cologne on the way in. I mean, like just be yourself and be honest with people because when you're honest with people. People might be upset, but it's really honesty. I mean, there's really no way of looking at it besides I'm being me, and if you love me for who I am, you'll accept this. I, I agree. It's 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 a wonderfully liberating existence. I I my my kids, Daddy, you're too honest. I'm like, hey, I worked hard for this honesty, you know. You earned it. Yeah, yeah, I worked hard for it. this honesty. Clean this, living. I earned this honesty, man. It may here's here's your diploma in the school of hard knocks. Yeah, exactly. I earned this honesty. So and I've I agree. been honest about stuff. You know, there's been times in the where I've been honest about things that I usually wouldn't talk about. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and, and, I, and it just came out one day, and I said it, and I've and the coolest thing is those are things that maybe I would try to sweep under the rug of my life like it wasn't the best times yep, of my life. Yep. But the people I said it to, they got more respect for me. Yeah. They, like, respected me even more because they're like, wow. And they were like, man, Ashley's hardcore. Dude. That's a big thing in my church. We talk about testimony. And, and it took me a while to kind of understand that and, and because it was counterintuitive. Because in those sittings, you know, you, you got a perception about yourself. But the more I gave up, and, you know, you're not going to tell every little secret, but the more I, I shared with my own personal pain and journey, you know what? I realized there was a big crowd of people saying, you know what? Us too. You know, <laughs> us too. So, yeah. So honesty. Exactly. Honesty is good. And normally when you're honest, other people feel like they can be honest around you. Let's do it. You know, okay, I think the second thing that will really help, um, you know, drive these seven steps home is to realize that you might have to offer some backstory, especially to family and friends over this holiday season. Don't assume. Don't assume that they yeah. know. Yep. And don't assume that they understand what you're talking about. Even if they were in the same house with you. Don't assume that. Because what does don't assuming assume. do? Makes an ass out of you and everybody else. There you go. And I don't look good in donkey shoes. <laughs> Neither do I. Mm, yeah. Donkey. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, you do that too well. <laughs> you know, it's the Godfather movie. You remember that scene? In, oh, well, you don't watch movies, Bill. No, I, actually, uh, that, you know that is, I'm talking about? it's a movie I've seen. Yeah, yes. The donkey thing, yeah. 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 Well, that's one movie that Bill's seen. Um, <laughs> so okay, count it on one hand. It's still in the last century, though. Oh, last century. Good, good job. It's an ongoing joke, hey, you know, <laughs> listeners. So the last century, the, the listeners, you'll have to get on Spreaker and it was iTunes after to the find Last out Supper what that joke is. and in the Last Century. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but you don't want to. You don't want to assume that people know what you're talking about. You don't want to assume that people understand or know. And a lot of times, we just assume that people are in our head, and we sit there and we go, "Well, I did this for this. I can't believe they're giving me attitude or whatever it is." When in actuality, they probably have no idea what's going on. 
And if they do, you haven't gone up there and started the dialogue. Like, if you remember back on the first hour, I was talking about my uncle and when we started this conversation, and I literally wanted to react hardcore with him because I had been dealing with the issues with the situation, and I didn't want to really talk about it, and so I really wanted to react. And instead of reacting, I became really proactive, and we had a good conversation, and I and I realized that by not reacting, I knew in my heart of hearts there's no way that he could understand the situation that was going on. He wouldn't be acting like that if he knew. Yeah. And, and I think you have to just give people the benefit of the doubt and hold back that ego because that ego wants to divide you off from everybody in the room, especially people in your family. And they, the ego would rather have you driving home in the middle of the night, going back eight hours back home so you can sit by yourself and have your own Christmas with a bottle of Jack Daniels. You know what I'm saying? And, and talking about how awful your family is. That's what the ego would prefer you to have. It would, you know, instead of, wow, I'm friends with all my family. I'm honest with them. You know, I don't, I don't care. I don't judge them. So I don't really care if I am being judged because really, if you think about it, if you're judging other people, that's the problem. And, and, and if you stop judging them, it really doesn't matter if anybody's judging you, does it? It just doesn't matter. And 40 years later, you're alone. <laughs> with the judgment, right? <laughs> you and ego, it's just you and ego. <laughs> and and uh, there with uh, Jack Daniels and his partner, Jimmy B. My drink alone. <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. You're alone. It's like that Castaway movie, you know, where uh, he... Tom he, Hanks. Yeah. And after a while, he started talking to which, himself. Which I, did, which I did not see, but I know uh, what it is. Your ego that. becomes, it's like that volleyball. Yeah. You know, they did this, whatever his name was. And, and, and instead of being a nice guy, the ego just puts you down on every single step of the way, but also tells you that it's the right thing for you to be doing because you're better than everybody else. Yeah, yeah, you know, you don't yeah. need them. They're just bringing you down. That's you know? it. That's it. They're trying to kill you, put you in the grave faster. And again, going back to the concept of assumptions making ass out of you and me, um, you know, you have to remember that too. It, assumptions do put a barrier between us and other people and us and love. And the only way you can connect is to love and otherwise if you put judgment out there all you're doing is connecting with judgment and that's a pretty empty feeling you got nothing there yeah and, and that whole robe thing i don't look good in a black judge robe it's just kind of i want to see you Th- in the wig doesn't uh yeah you need one of those english style wool is that wigs. what it is yeah that's not if, a good look the whole thing with the like the whole like uh, colonial day wigs and yeah. stuff with the ponytail yeah. yeah see i can't do the judge thing I, i'm not gonna do it not a good look Mm-mm. i'm not gonna judge no, I'm not either. And I, I, I we'll don't let look, you do that, Bill. I don't look good in the dock, you know, being judged. You know, <laughs> you're I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't look good judging. Cut off his look, head. Yeah, you know, off with his head. <laughs> with his head. <laughs> you know, so no judges and no judging on this show. Right. Okay. Cool. Works judge free me. zone. Judge Works free zone. Me. There's no judge Judy here. All right. So, so when we have that uh, evaluation, Ashley, I'm going to remind you: no judging here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See, I, 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 if she had been drinking something right now, it yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't come up on her nose. Right her nose. You know, so, she so, just went. So my end of the year evaluation, no judging allowed. No judging. And I shall not be judged. And I shall not be judged. Well, you know, we'll have to go out and have some drinks or something instead then because we'll have to we'll have to refute that concept. <laughs> but, yeah, um, you know, and, and lastly, but least, and I think this is what we talked about earlier, was, you know, when was the last time that the scorekeeper was happy? Go into these situations with your family and friends and realize that you will enjoy the the season as much as you allow yourself to enjoy yourself allowing yourself to be happy is part of the key allowing yourself to be happy getting over the issues not allowing the past to stand in the way of the present is what is profoundly important for you for the season but it it goes much farther than that you know but let's just look at it from the holiday christmas season right now it's the it's the most wonderful time of the year it can be all year long Putting past judgments aside, allowing yourself to be you, doing you some me, some me, and allowing this to happen. Because guess what? It'll be the most amazing season. Eric, great show tonight. Yeah, yeah. And let me just add real quick. If you get a chance, just go to a children's Christmas play. It will change your life. Go look at some elementary school kids doing a Christmas play, and it will change your life. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Keep joy in your life. Keep love in your life. And smile often. Bill, awesome show. Thank you very much. And also thank you to all our listeners who followed us on uh, Facebook and Twitter tonight. We really appreciate you. 
And I think this is an awesome show. And again, we want you to have the best holiday Christmas season, you know. And also, there is one other thing: give give your time and talent to an organization that yeah. needs you. That also helps as well, helping people that are less fortunate or helping people that don't have any family. It puts everything right into perspective. We hope you have the best holiday season. And this has been our survival edition of Perspectives. We have a new show for you next week. Perspectives with Ashley Burgess will be back in. We'll be back in three shakes.